But like, if you had to pick one team that is not even on anyone's radar right now for a Super Bowl prediction, this can just be a wild random pick, okay? I've got my team. And I think you know where I'm going here. The team that has the fifth worst odds <laughs> to win the Super Bowl right now. The Houston Texans. All right, guys, welcome back to the Establish the Past podcast presented by Clutch Points. I'm your host, Blake Bubble, with me as always, my co host, Dylan Reagan. And Dylan, we are back here with another episode of the podcast coming off another week in the NFL season. And now, as we get ready to move into week five, we're going to do something a little different here in terms of looking ahead and try to make some predictions for the rest of the 23 NFL season. And some of these may be bolder than others, Dylan, of course, but. We're going to do our best to kind of come up with some some really bold predictions here for the rest of the season, uh, even though only four games played, but that at least gives us enough of a sample size to start forming some opinions on teams, players, coaches, all that. Yeah, it used to be the quarter point of the season. Now we have the extra game, so it feels a little – but it still feels kind of like a, a benchmark point. It would have been perfect if the last games were on September 30th. It could have been like, all right, here's the f- first full month. Yes, it went on October 1st, but still have a better idea. Um, some things that happened in week one, like uh, Josh Allen struggles that a lot were made of, and t- rightfully some of the mistakes he made, and now he's playing like a cyborg again, and the Bills look like potentially the best team in the AFC. So – uh, yeah, things change pretty quickly, and that doesn't mean they're not going to change back a different way over the course of the long season. But yeah, definitely some some trends and some things I feel much better about um, predicting now than I would have if we tried to do something like this after the first week of games. All right, we're going to do this by just certain sections we've got kind of outlined here, and we're going to give some thoughts on kind of each of these and make some predictions uh, given sort of the category that we, we have here. But yeah. Of course, Dylan, we always talk about towards the end of the season, who's getting fired. And we're four <laughs> weeks in. It's time to start forming our opinions on the guys who could potentially get fired sooner rather than later, uh, given the state of their team. You and I probably both agree that Matt Eberflus getting fired by the Bears at this point. Probably not a bold prediction, but no. it is something that, like, I think this thing could happen way sooner than maybe most expect at this point. Like, usually a guy gets pretty, you know, a lengthy run, right? He gets a chance to... I don't know, game 14, 15, something like that at times. But I don't know, Dylan. This thing is um, <laughs> this thing's spiraling pretty quick for the Bears. So maybe it's not a bold prediction to say that he gets fired, period, because I don't see another alternative right now when you think about this team potentially having the top two picks next year and all this other stuff and just a complete restart. Um, yep. like th- this, th- They play at Washington, home against Minnesota, home against the Raiders, at the Chargers, at New Orleans, like that's their next five games. They probably win one of those somewhere, I guess, but I I don't know. After the way they lost that Denver game, like I wouldn't be shocked if Aberflus and given the Chase Claypool stuff, which I know has been kind of weird, you know, media people are like, why is he telling yeah. us this? And one thing, like all kinds of stuff like that. I don't know, man. This <laughs> this thing could get ugly quick in terms of like his job security the rest of the way. It's it's been a mess. I mean they you wanted some progress. We talked about it before the season, even if we didn't think the Bears uh, were going to be a contender for a playoff spot. Like I know that was potentially a fringe belief for some um, Bears fans. And, you know, you want to have optimism and hope, but all you really wanted was to see progress. And again, there were moments on Sunday where it felt like, all right, maybe, yes, the, the Broncos do have a historically bad defense, the worst defense that DVOA has ever had through four weeks of a season, which is insane, um, especially not, that's not something we thought was going to happen. But uh, nonetheless, made Justin Fields look great in, that, in the first part of the game. And then by the end of it, they still find a way to blow it. And it's like those moments where even when you, you want to feel good, everything kind of spiraled downhill there was a lot of some questionable decision making or not even decision making but play call decisions uh on that fourth down in particular i know a lot of people wanted to see justin fields do the jalen hurts tush push didn't happen and uh maybe you also just kick a field goal i mean there's a number of things uh that have gone wrong for the bears but it's it's things like you just mentioned with what's going on with claypool after the first week a lot of the great there's so many great bears beat writers but writing about just the you know how shook the the building felt after that week one loss to the Packers just one game again like we're talking about here that you can't make snap judgments off one game and sure enough it it seemed to have kind of set a tone for where this team has gone um over the first few weeks so yeah to say Iberflus is going to be the first coach uh fired isn't bold I think like you said the timing's bold maybe um more so part of it if it's sometime earlier I, I don't know if there's a point in that at this point 
uh, we'll see. I know they, you know, they just hired uh, Kevin Warren right as the new president of the whole um, organization at the top, and you know maybe there's questions if if Poles is still going to be the guy, but uh, it, maybe the he's does stay, and they, and, you know, some teams don't like to, don't you know, always hire the coach and the GM in to, in tandem like uh, like the Lions did, for example, with Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. They they might feel like all right, maybe Poles is making some personnel decisions that are fine, but we need to. Uh, have a new head coach so it could happen earlier for that reason they could also just clean house um it's a lot of a lot of questions but uh you know like you mentioned they, they might end up with right now they have the number one and two picks at the top of the draft that's a pretty promising start for a new offensive minded head coach um i don't know what at this point though are you just giving up on justin fields uh, it's a it's a messy situation that's made it just so I feel so bad mostly for Bears fans in fields, uh, even if you uh, don't believe that fields has the potential that the Bears did when they drafted him in the uh, in the top 10 with that or the top just outside the top 10. I forget if it was 9, 10 or 11, but um, man, I just feel bad about everything that's happening there. It's just there's so many fun stories in the NFL, and this is uh, one that unfortunately has been pecking at us. And, yeah, you know, just kind of the way that they blew that huge lead against the Broncos summed up a lot of things for the for the bears and yeah it's uh, the only even uh, you know when we put into the coaches in the hot seat through the first quarter of the season i couldn't really find too many where i felt like there should be in my mind way too hot of seats beyond eber i put mcdaniels on here with the raiders i don't know with seems like mark davis is pretty committed to seeing this one out um there are some personnel decisions that have been solid but other ones that right it's really early to judge on a rookie especially on the on the edge but yeah Tyree Wilson obviously off to a kind of a tough start um so far for the Raiders and uh obviously all the things that happened with Chandler Jones um just uh, Devontae Adams comments weekly that seem to be like he's trusting things seem to be maybe a little disgruntled it's 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 definitely not a uh and some of the comments he made about aiden mcconnell after the game were kind of weird kind of you know it's a backup qb doesn't know he's for sure going to start the whole week and he i thought he played okay for the most part made some bad decisions but on you know not crazy to see those things happen he's also getting mauled by khalil mack obviously with six sacks but um man i it was weird kind of to just something that for example you never hear sean mcveigh or a lot of head coaches say about a, a quarterback that are always going to be the guy to to take the take the bullet essentially um so th- th- i mean he was one that i put on there there's a lot of other teams though i don't feel like i'm not feeling even with and we'll get to the bengals in the panic uh, section um i'm not feeling like zach taylor's in any danger even if there are questions about the sophistication of the offensive game plan i'm not I'm not going to be crazy enough to say that um, Bill Belichick <laughs> should be in any trouble. I know there were some players were asked questions about that after the game yesterday, and I was oh, like, "What is, what is happening?" And then uh, even like Robert Sala with the Jets, like you mentioned, like that. I know there were some questions about if, the, yeah, if Rodgers was healthy the whole season, but man, this team's fighting. Um, so I, I really had a hard time compared to maybe other years of finding too many coaches that I felt like were really in tough spots here um a lot of new or coaches at least in new spots like frank reich where it's you're not gonna uh i mean that yeah we've seen some unprecedented uh, year one moves but they have to be absolute disasters like what we saw in denver and uh jacksonville the year before with urban meyer and, and hackett so yeah it was kind of it's kind of a one-man show here for me with ira and maybe mcdaniels is a fringe number two even though I, I think the relationship with mark davis has him secure at least for a bit longer i sent your message um as of this second, we're recording this, Josh McDaniels, if you go to Wikipedia, his Wikipedia, this will be removed by the time everyone listens to this probably, but his second season with the Raiders, uh, if you look at the finish that is currently listed on uh, his Wikipedia page, you know, he was third in the <laughs> AFC West for the Raiders in 2022. Just... As of this season, one and three, and the finish is called Super Fired is... Uh, what someone has added in there. So he was fired by the Broncos in 2010. Uh, a Raider fan, perhaps, um, saying that he will be super fired by the Raiders um, as the finish of this season. So there you have it, Dylan. Um, Maybe we'll edit important. that into the video of this yes. uh, podcast. So, I just took a picture of it before um, it's gone. <laughs> so there you go. It will be gone soon, I'm sure, but it is at least worth noting right now. That is the projected result, according to Wikipedia. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think these are the two uh, top candidates here and yeah, maybe not that bold, but I don't really see a lot of other contenders right now in terms of um, firings. Uh, so yeah, we'll yeah. see what happens. 
Before we get back to our discussion, let me take a moment to tell you about our amazing sponsor, Factor. With football season already in full swing, you might be looking for hearty, convenient meals for jam-packed game days. Between setting multiple fantasy lineups last minute and taking care of chores around the house before the first slate kicks off, I don't always choose the healthiest meal options on Sundays. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up in no time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. One of the best parts about Factor is you get to skip the extra trip to the grocery store, as well as the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, all while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. You can choose from 35-plus weekly flavor-packed, fresh, never-frozen meals that meet your preferences. They're ready to eat in just two minutes, so all you need to do is heat and enjoy before getting back to the game. Last Sunday, I had the blueberry pancakes with cinnamon butter and chicken sausage, and it was as delicious as it sounds. The perfect way to kick off a full day of watching football. If you're looking for calorie-conscious options to counter the extra couch time on Sundays, try Factor's delicious calorie-smart meals with around 550 or fewer calories per serving. Head to factormeals.com slash establish50 and use code establish50 to get 50% off. That's code establish50 at factormeals.com slash establish50 to get 50% off. All right. Let's move on to like the trade deadline because this, if you're projecting ahead, you're making predictions. Trades are always something that um, you know are, we're already talking about trades, and we are yep. you know here in week four, and we were talking about trades weeks ago, and all this. And so, Dylan, I, I think this is the best one in terms of the number one guy. I think that everyone is looking at, and because we heard it as soon as Aaron Rodgers went down, everybody's trying to connect Kirk Cousins to the Jets. Are the Jets going to trade for Kirk Cousins? All this other stuff, but. Everybody wants Kirk Cousins traded, I suppose, at this point. Um, maybe some fan bases don't want him to be the quarterback of their team, but everyone looking for options in terms of the trade deadline for Kirk Cousins. Um, do you have any bold predictions for Kirk Cousins uh, being traded this season from the Minnesota Vikings? My, it wouldn't be bold to say he's not going to be traded, so i gotta, I got to find a, a spot. I mean, the Jets make Give so me much a sense. Give me yeah, man, it's yeah, it's there's teams, you know, the Jets are the only one that really makes a ton of sense in terms of their that QB away. And we and you saw it last night when Zach Wilson uh, played quite well uh, for large portions of the game um, where it's like, all right, if the, you do have a uh, competent QB play, this is what it could look like um, with this offense. And Garrett Wilson just feels like he's ready to go off at any moment. Um, so in terms of Kirk Cousins trade destinations, there's not really outside of that. Like a ton, unless you like, this would be bizarro world if the Titans could try to get him. I just don't see that. But um, trying to think of like any other, there's not really a lot of teams where it would make a lot of sense. Maybe the Falcons if they could find a way. But again, it's the, the Vikings are in a, yeah, Kirk has a no trade clause. He seems quite content there. And I think the Vikings, I mean, uh, as an offense, uh, in Arno, again, it, we'll see if they're able to, to, I believe he's a free agent in the offseason. Um, if, see if they're able to re sign him. But, their you know success rate offensive dvoa pretty much any like major stat like they're they're cooking um at the top 10 or so top five in some cases let's see where they're on offensive dvoa yeah uh, down at just outside the top 10 so i mean they're close and and kirk's played relatively well yeah he had that pick six against the panthers but fought back and overall we've seen this team yeah with a few different bounces of the ball they'd at least be two and two um in the nfc they're definitely not out of the race by any means with how things have gone so, I mean, the, the Jets are, I would love just for the storylines, but to have to learn the whole offense midseason, it's not a simple thing. Um, anyone that watched the quarterback show on Netflix saw how meticulous and detailed Kirk is and how much he wa is, wants to plan ahead and wants to know everything uh, as well as possible and how that could be difficult. Um, the Vikings would really have to slide in my point of view, and I just don't see them having that kind of slide. But teams that uh outside of the jets if you want to be like really bold with it like i said I, I feel like the falcons are one that i don't know if it's the right system for him uh they'd have to probably open things up a bit but they, they de i think they have some of the personnel to do so uh, i know there's some frustration with arthur smith uh maybe, maybe more so with the quarterback though um so maybe that's uh maybe that's your dark horse uh team that like I've not heard any rumor by any reporter about the Falcons as making uh, as a possible trade destination. Um, but if they think they have a shot in the NFC South, and uh, I think they certainly do with how this, how 
anemic the Saints offense has looked and if depending on what you think of the Buccaneers being able to sustain what they've done I know some trade uh, teams players on the Bucks that were before the season mentioned as trade chips and now at three and one have kind of uh, simmered there um, but yeah I don't know what do you, do you think there, there's anything legit to him possibly going to the Jets or do you think that um, Kirk is most likely going to also stay as a Viking I think this would be much more interesting conversation had they have found a way to lose that game to the Panthers. But I think the fact yeah. is that, that they won to move to one and three. And now it's like, you know, uh, Chiefs are coming off a tough game against the Jets. They get the Chiefs at home. That I mean, look, offensively, they, they can put up some points here. Um, defensively, I don't know. Um, but, like, then they get the Bears after that. So, like, you really think about it. Like, they can completely right the ship the next couple of weeks. All you need is kind of a – you know, quote unquote, un- upset win against the Chiefs, and then you got the Bears who are atrocious. So, I mean, yeah, it's not. Then at that point, like, what? Why would you if you're the Vikings? You're right back in the thick of things. So, I I think if they had lost that game, which it did look like for a while there, right? You're like, oh boy, if they lose the Panthers, then sell everybody. Like, it's it's over. Like, let's just let's move on here. Um, but I think the fact that they won that game now sets you up where if you beat the Chiefs, you should beat the Bears you're back to 500 and all is well again. And you do still have Justin Jefferson there, by the way, too. So it's like, maybe it's me as the Justin Jefferson fantasy owner. I don't want to see Kirk Cousins going anywhere. No. Uh, But (laughs) I just think with Jefferson there, you trade Cousins. Think about the frustration that could exist with your best player. All of a sudden, maybe you get, I'm not saying the same situation, but we remember like the A.J. Brown Titan stuff. He gets traded to the Eagles. Like you don't want Justin Jefferson to kind of put you in that position where it's like, oh, boy. So, nope. yeah, I, I just don't see it happening. Um, I could have seen the possibility if they were 0-4, but I think there's a big difference, at least right now, with the way the schedule sets up between 0-4 and 1-3, and and you know, and, and maybe there's a way to turn this thing around. So, Yeah, I, I, it just doesn't feel like it's quite there. We This is one that's maybe keep on the radar. It's going to continue being a conversation because everyone wants to talk about trades and uh, it's not even just uh, you know sides like clutch points and other uh, media outlets. It's former players and current players and people speculating what it, why it should happen. So I, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's it's one to to keep. Uh, yeah, just keep on the radar. But like you said, uh, you're going down an interesting path. Even if sure you want to get some assets for him, but a lot of they're also still gonna if Kirk leaves in free agency, still gonna get a comp pick that's probably gonna be quite high. So I mean, they're already. There's things factored in where it's you can keep him and still not necessarily just completely get nothing um, if he leaves in free agency. And like you said, the message it could send to players like Jefferson, uh, you're, don't, you're going down an interesting path there. I think the, the Vikings more likely, like the kind of the, they under, again, we knew in the offseason, it wasn't like a team that went all in uh, thinking they were going to be a Super Bowl team necessarily. They looked more like a team that was retooling, as the Rams like to say, not rebuilding uh, with some of the moves they made. Um and so far, yeah, the, it's the defense, as we know, that has been a struggle, even if it uh, played a bit better. And a lot of defenses have looked better uh, playing the Panthers. But, um, yeah, we'll, uh, this is one I think that October, what happens in October, the rest of the month, is going to really dictate where the Vikings are. And more so, yeah, maybe it's other players. I, I know I put on Daniil Hunter on here. He's a guy that a lot of teams that uh, are – you know, more top contenders that have a, a need at the edge um, is a, a possible trade chip for the Vikings. I think that's way more likely that we'd see him moved. Uh, where he'd be moved, that's that's a good question. I think teams that – I'm trying to, like, look at the list of teams that need edge help. A lot of the best DVOA teams, I'm not going to lie, are pretty good on defensive line. But maybe the, the Ravens, they, they looked, you know, against uh, DTR, a pretty rough first start. Some of the play calling from Stefanski yesterday – a little bit interesting um but nonetheless uh, you know that that defense has a lot of great players i I think edge rusher is one where they could use a need so if i'm going to make a i'll have one bold prediction we saw the the ravens last year trade for roquan worked out quite well i'll go with uh baltimore daniel hunter um as one of my trade predictions here with some of the players we listed yeah that's an interesting one i think um again the ravens haven't been shy about that kind of stuff so it's yeah they they try to address, I think, their needs pretty quickly. And so, yeah, we'll see what happens uh, there with that. Anything else on the, the, the trade front, I guess? Um, you know, that, I, again, there's this this list will change as we go forward. Yeah. But I'm curious if there's, you know, maybe we have any other thoughts on guys that could be trying. Hunter Renfro, because that is someone that, you know, I think people were somewhat surprised maybe he wasn't traded. Um, 
but like he's still there and could be a yeah asset for somebody like we said if things keep going the wrong way for the Raiders. Jonathan Taylor situation, who knows at this point? <laughs> like I, no idea. Um, that one's such a hard one to predict because it's like you just don't know how this is going to play out necessarily. So, yeah, those are some of the names too. I guess that you could you could banter about uh, when it comes to trade possibilities. The Taylor stuff, yeah, it's become a little bit hard to just keep speculating on where he could end up. And we're seeing a lot of like places like the Dolphins in the off season that sounded like it would make sense, and then we've seen how their running back room has looked, and they're going to get Jeff Wilson back. I mean, they. That I don't think they have a need there. Um, so it, it becomes a little harder as the season starts, and maybe um, if teams do endure some injuries, um, I'm sure someone would want to trade for him. It's just all about if the Colts are going to accept a, a package. I'm, I just hope they figure it out because you look at what Zach Moss has done in the early going for the, the Colts, and, and I don't have the biggest day against the Rams defense, but uh, early in the season he's he's been quite good in what – the idea of Richardson and Jonathan Taylor together in the backfield. Yeah. It, as a Colts fan, I'd be a little frustrated, even though so far you haven't really noticed it because you're just so dang happy that your coach looks great and your rookie quarterback looks great. Um, so yeah, finding a trade spots for him. I know at one point the Browns were mentioned with Chubb going down. They, you know, they obviously brought it back cream hunt and look, okay. So it, it gets a little more uh, dicey. Uh, this, I would, people are joking like it's going to just be the Eagles giving up like a later round pick and getting him and just adding him to their ridiculous running back room already um and teams that other teams that make sense just aren't there where I'm like even if Tampa Bay um you know they've kind of struggled to run obviously and I think there's a little more systematic problems there that I don't think just one running back is going to solve so it becomes tougher than uh with Hunter Renfro yeah he's been effectively phased out of what they do a lot of the time in the offense now uh I think he might have had two targets yesterday uh, maybe three, but just overall isn't on, isn't getting the snaps he used to, isn't being used the same way it was before, um, even when when Jimmy was playing. So, yeah, that's that's one where I I don't know exactly what the Raiders are getting um, as compensation, but any team that needs a slot receiver, uh, teams that need, and maybe this is more so going to as injuries kind of pile up for certain teams. You want a guy that also can go in there and is going to put his nose into block as a as a receiver as well. Um, May you know I, I know Houston feels pretty good about their receiving room, but he he fits well into. They already have some guys kind of doing that well. But if you want to add a, another piece to what Nico Collins and Robert Woods and all this guy and Tank Dell are doing, maybe that's a a possible place. But I, I don't know. It, Raiders are. It's so hard to predict what's happening there. And like you said, it, it's one where you thought it was going to happen before and it hasn't now. And you you think that he could still be part of that team. So kind of you know I I think there. I wouldn't be shocked if if he's moved in, in general, if the Raiders make some trades here and um, we're not getting too far away, maybe that's more so than a specific player uh, prediction, but I, I wouldn't be, uh, I don't feel it's crazy to, to predict that the Raiders are going to be a seller at the deadline and potentially make some moves with an eye again on next year. And I, I don't think that's the bad decision, uh, the wrong decision, even if the defense did have a pretty successful second half after um justin herbert's hand got stepped on uh, making that comeback for the raiders so uh, they, they have a lot of needs that i i think looking to the future or we're, we're not too far off where that should be the the game plan for vegas all right so moving on to some super bowl contenders and pretenders it's always fun to make predictions on these because you kind of have a you know maybe a feel on where you think a team is of course an injury happens and all of a sudden everything changes but for now kind of what we've seen from some of these teams I'm going to give you mine here off the bat. I don't know how bold this is, but I think it's they are currently, what, seventh, I think, in the pecking order of Super Bowl odds right now. But to me, my prediction is that there is no better value out there for anyone who wants to bet on an NFL future Super Bowl champion, to me, than one of the teams we just mentioned. That's the Baltimore Ravens at plus 1,600. Um, I think that is, if you're just looking for value, right, I think that's kind of low because they're um, – quite a bit behind the Cowboys who are the next team in front of them. Um, yeah. And they're kind of right there with the Lions too, which we can maybe group the Lions into this conversation. They're at plus 1,800 if you look at DraftKings. But, so the Ravens, I, I think, are a team that I am buying in on. Um, now, the problem with the Ravens is here's one thing that you can have an issue with. Now, they beat the Texans, they beat the Bengals, beat the Browns. You know, no, there have been circumstances involved in, in some of those games. Obviously, Deshaun Watson didn't play for the Browns in that one. And there's a game at home, the Colts, all that. But, I like what I'm seeing for the Ravens. The problem is that when you look at the final, gosh, their schedule is brutal down the stretch where, I mean, theoretically, I could just go all the way from the Arizona Cardinals game, which even that one at this point, Cardinals are not playing bad football. 
the Seahawks, the Browns, the Bengals, all three at home. At Los Angeles to play the Chargers, home against the Rams, at the Jags, at the Niners, home against the Dolphins, home against the Steelers. That's a brutal stretch to finish. And by the way, before you even get there, you got to go to Pittsburgh, got to go play Tennessee in London, and they got the Lions too. Schedule's brutal, but I almost wonder if that helps them a little bit maybe, if they get to the playoffs, win a lot of these games. Um, so I'm going to say I'm fully buying the Baltimore Ravens as a Super Bowl champion contender, um, even if the schedule <laughs> – could really hand them some losses. I think they could still be tested enough once they get to the playoffs to have a real good chance to maybe be kind of that sleeper team in the mix. I, I wouldn't be shocked at all. I think they belong in that conversation for sure. And, and it's crazy to think where this division was before the season and what, you know, with what the Steelers offense looks like, what's happened with Burrow and the Bengals, and then obviously the Browns being – while the defense – I still think they're going to be really good even if they finally had a game after giving up what – like. The, how many first downs in the whole season and then now they they give up a few touchdowns but down to down they were playing pretty well against baltimore it was just a few plays where lamar d- did lamar things uh made some just ridiculous throws deep down the, the the field outside the hashes in addition to using his feet i mean every this you, again it wasn't like the whole game but it was like five six plays where it was just magic um there's nothing that the browns could do to stop him and that's the thing that makes them such a threat with a defense that has gotten much better they're uh through four weeks now uh fourth in dvoa on that side that's much better than they were last year uh definitely some variance there but i mean they've this is not a, a team that is lacking a formidable group on that on that side compared to even the last couple of years like i said maybe could use that that pass rusher maybe that's the last piece that does make this defense even more formidable and tries to, to bring it up to the group that's ahead of them with teams like Dallas, Buffalo, and, and the Browns. So we'll see what, on that side. The, you mentioned the, the Lions. I, I think that the odds are probably in those places, and even if the NFC maybe is a little deeper than it with the contenders than it looked before the season, I still think the AFC path, you mentioned the schedule, <clears throat> but then you look at the playoffs and the quarterbacks you're going through, I think that plays into the odds there to an extent. For, uh, for why the, the they're yeah. so close but if i had to like between just the two teams if i if you're telling me it's even if with all the great things i believe about the lions have done and I do think they're some of the defensive signs i'm, I'm happy it hopefully it looks like branch is okay right i know he, brian branch that has been a stellar rookie for them and had the injury who came back got hurt again i think he's even if he's banged up it's not going to be something way too long term unless i unless i miss an update so that i think what the lions defense has done is legit they're in the top 10 <laughs> in dvoa through to four weeks um they obviously have one of the most efficient offenses even if jameer gibbs have fantasy owners are frustrated they they know their style they they're making things happen they're only going to get better um when they get williams back and overall uh i think they belong in this guy it's kind of crazy i don't i don't want to say they're I, I think you know this list of teams uh, in terms of can they win a Super Bowl, I think they all all four can. Um, I, I don't think any of them are complete pretenders in that sense of, of whether they actually, you know, how far they get in the playoffs, what they actually do. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not going to be bold enough to say, oh, the Dolphins' offense, uh, they've been figured out, and they're going to. No, I think uh, I think the the Bills have a special group on defense, and a lot of what played into their favor was their ability to not stop scoring and allow the force the Dolphins to be kind of one dimensional. Um, we see the Cowboys lose that game to the to the Cardinals, and then they have the defense looks insane. And maybe we could say more about the Patriots and Dallas um, in that game. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, even if all four of them feel like they could contend i think for me yeah the ravens are the one i think you nailed it like if i had to put the one that i would feel the best about of this group and it's it's all because of lamar it's because of the fact that even when things are going to be wrong he's still going to have answers and because i i do believe that this defense is legitimate now maybe miami it, they have health on if they get health in their side uh, you know with you have Xavier howard still on one side you, if you get Jalen Ramsey back for that stretch run and you're in the you make the playoffs and now you have those two corners shutting down both sides of the field to an extent I know Jalen last season wasn't as dominant as he had been before for the Rams uh the conversation might change a bit uh for what the Dolphins could be um I, maybe it's taking some more time for them to to come together but I, I think if their defense can even take any step up they've been pretty brutal th- through the first few weeks 
the offense is going to uh, rebound. I don't think they're going to look like they did this week. They're still first in offensive DVOA, both running and passing the ball, despite what just happened. The, uh, that's, it says a lot about what the Bills' defense is, and they still put up points, but obviously the Bills' offense kind of went nuclear. Um, but I think the Ravens, yeah, uh, even if – I know you, you had some questions about Tom Munkin and what this could look like. And, yeah, there's still some, again, down to down against a really tough Browns defense. Uh, didn't look perfect, but just enough plays where that's all it takes. And um, – I think the Ravens are definitely a Super Bowl contender and an AFC that I wouldn't say is lacking any. I'd say there's quite a few teams that um, I wouldn't be surprised if they made the Super Bowl, and that's what makes the AFC and overall this league so fun. And it's I think the NFC having teams that are in that conversation on top of the big three, before the season I kind of said I didn't think anyone was really going to be on the level of the Eagles, Cowboys, and, and the Niners. Um, but the Lions have crept up, man. They they're definitely they're definitely winking and hanging out in that in that group and uh, I don't think it's a I don't think it's just a, a one month blip. Uh, we uh, obviously this goes back to the teams that have the best record since like mid the midpoint of last season through now. It's the, the top five teams are the four teams that made and it's still the Bengals despite what happened or this week again. But it's the four teams that made the conference championship games last year and the Lions that have the five best records since like week nine of last year and that's not not a surprise um i just wonder against the top end teams let's see the uh you know we, we saw the lines beat the chiefs obviously um uh, when they get into some games against some of these nfc teams that they're going to be having to face in the postseason I, i'll be curious how they do but i th- i think they're i think they're at least going to be a, a solid challenge and have a shot um and that's not something that lions fans have obviously said many times in the past let alone you know they haven't even won a division title basically my whole life i think since maybe uh since I was like one. So <laughs> this isn't a team that uh, being talked about as a possible Super Bowl contender. I, I think it's pretty nuts. And I think it's a credit to what Dan Campbell and that team have uh, built together. All right. So a couple other Super Bowl predictions from me quickly. Um, at like the quarter of the way mark, I like to make a make a Super Bowl <laughs> futures bet like at each quarter okay. of the NFL season. So I did this before the game yesterday. They won the one game everybody's talking about, and the Bills' odds at the time were like plus 1,000. So I went ahead and bet on the Bills. So if I had to make my – how bold this is, they're currently at the fourth best odds. But if I had to pick a team to win the Super Bowl right now, I'd pick the Bills. Um, so that's what I would do after four weeks. But I'm also going to put you on the spot here too, Dylan. We're going to make our sleeper Super Bowl prediction. So, like, if you had to pick one team that is not even on anyone's radar right now for a Super Bowl prediction – this can just be a wild, random pick, okay? I've got my team, and I think you know where I'm going here. The team that has the fifth worst odds to win the Super Bowl right now, the Houston oh Texans, who oh, man. could be there. in the driver's seat, Dylan, to win the AFC South. I think it's a real possibility that the Texans could win the AFC South. I love C.J. Stroud. He's been just fantastic so far. I think that team's only going to get better from here. They just trounced the Steelers. They blew out the Jags. So, hey, I don't think the Texans are going to win the Super Bowl. But if you're looking for that just lottery bet on a team or just, you know, full-on lottery pick here, Texans' odds are way too short for me. Plus 15. No, yeah. It's fifth worst at this point. So give me the Texans. Yeah, they have the 11th best EVOA right now. I mean, it's not. Yeah. this isn't just a, a random thing. Like, they deserve to be much higher than that. And like you said, this division – yeah, the Jags don't look as good as we thought. They still, you know, a big win, obviously. Um, last week, we'll see how they do against, I think, the Bills in London this coming week. Um, but, and the, you know, whatever, the Titans' defenses look great. Colts' offense have some really good things going. But, man, yeah, Stroud has looked unreal. Just It's not just the numbers. It's it's what they're doing, how they're doing it, the reads he's having, his his ability to, to just settle movements in the pocket when things do break down. They've had all these injuries in the offense. Like any, even the best rookie quarterbacks, um, when their offensive line is basically all hurt, and in some cases hurt it, uh, you're, but you're a third guy, they, they're they not going to perform. And he just, against a really – I still think the Steelers' defense is really good and has a good front. He just went off. Um, he he was ridiculous. So, yeah, I, th- I don't think it's, you know, for a really dark soup sleeper to see where they, they rank on the, you know, with the advanced numbers um, versus what we've seen. I, I think that's one that makes more sense than any other one I'm going to try to predict here. I, I didn't make, uh, you know, like, for example, right now in DVOA, Seattle's at 10th. I don't – I'm not going to yeah. predict the, the Seahawks to win the Super Bowl. Um if I'm going down as like a deep sleeper, maybe 
it's it have to be a team to make the Super Bowl or to to get just deep do, in the playoffs? Just do make the Super Bowl. Yeah, make, the Super, make the Super Bowl. Yeah, man. Because I don't maybe think the Texans Jets, are winning. Maybe the, the Super Jets Bowl. trade for Kirk Cousins. <laughs> now, I was gonna say the Jets may be the best option because clearly we see they can stay in games, but. Can you bank on Zach Wilson having that kind of game every game? At this point, we probably don't have the sample size to prove that. Um, but if you want to say this is the taking off point, then sure, the Jets should absolutely be much higher um, because the defense will keep them in games and give them a chance. Yeah. But So, yeah, I think the Jets are probably just that wild choice um, that makes the most sense because, like, for example, I also thought about the Rams. I know you're going to tell me no, no chance, but, um, look, you've – You've got offensive talent there. I know yeah. the game yesterday against the Colts did not, you know, go according to plan. They still won the game, but um, it's still kind of a wild choice for a team that I think, you know, does a good job putting players in the right position to succeed um, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I, maybe the Jets, just because you know, it's just crazy, crazy things have, have happened before. But I gotta listen. I don't think the Jets or the Texans are making the Super Bowl, but. I just thought it'd be interesting just to debate that around based on where these teams uh, yeah. are. Yeah. Right so. I, I think that, I mean, the first point you made about the Bills, I think obviously what happened yesterday is going to influence that. But yeah, after four weeks, if I, if I, if you had to like say um, who the Super Bowl uh, team they're going to face is, um, would you change it from, I believe you had, do you have the Niners making the Super Bowl? Would yep. you, would you feel pretty good about keeping that probably? Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't <laughs> change that at all. I, I think that's, um, I think they're the clear choice for me. Um, you know, Eagles we saw yesterday, although Washington's given them fits, as we know. I mean, we go back to last year and this year. But Cowboys, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I'm fully there yet. I, mean, I think this this week, week five, right, is where the Cowboys sure, go yeah. win in San Francisco, play well, then maybe my tune changes a little bit on the Cowboys. But not saying they're a bad team. I still think they're one of the best teams out there. But I don't know that I'm. I would pick them over – the Niners, the Bills, the Chiefs, Eagles. I don't know that I pick them over the Dolphins right now. Um, yeah, I'd probably still pick them over the Ravens, but yeah, I think to me, I'd still have five teams in front of the Cowboys. Yeah, I if I if I could switch, and this could age poorly if the Cowboys beat the Niners, but if I could switch from my Cowboys making the Super Bowl pick to the Niners. And then, yeah, the Bills. Those are the two teams that look the best to me. But I think it's two teams that we just talked about and the contender or pretender. Like the th- number three and four in total DVOA right now are the Lions and Ravens. Like that, <laughs> it's not yeah. out of the question to think that those teams could, could make it. And that's kind of a crazy thing, especially for Detroit again. But, um, yeah, I think you the, the Niners have looked – you know, they're – there's a lot of teams that are winning games and three and one, four and oh. There's not too many four and oh. I think it's just them and the, the Eagles, obviously. But, um the teams that are winning games and comfortably, but I mean, the Niners are everyone they're beating uh, by two, three scores, even, you know, games that are closer for a little while end up, they end up pulling away. And like the Rams game last, yes, uh, you know, against the Cardinals, Cardinals made it a little close for a second and they end up getting kind of blown out by the end of it. So, I mean, they've, they've been the most just wrecking crew team. And I think Brock Purdy's looked pretty good. A lot of the advanced numbers, even taking it into account, everything he has around him and who he's facing, have him, in the top five um, QBs uh, in DYAR, um, same kind of football, old football outsider stats that Aaron Schatz has. Uh, also in that top five, though, <laughs> perfect for you, CJ Stroud, right there, sandwiched mm-hmm. between Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. I, I don't think it's crazy, to, again, to say that he's been, even if I think that the Colts um, and Anthony Richardson made some just ridiculous Josh Allen esque throws getting hit by Aaron Donald down the sideline. Like, he was playing on another level in the second half. I still think that Stroud right now and what the Texans have built around him and the culture and how they're playing and all the guys buying in. Robert Woods, my man, you know, one of my favorite players, the Rams, uh, you know, great trendsetter for the receiver room. All those guys are blocking really well like he loves to do. So, um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, if I, if I could, though, Bills Niners would be – probably my like adjusted super bowl pick maybe every month i have a different one yeah. next time um the cowboys niner game like you said might be revealing of quite a few things we'll see if dallas's defense can can cause some more issues in san francisco's had the face so far but yeah that'd be the modified pick um even if i think you the texans jets kind of the, the teams that are further down where you, I, they're absolute flyers on them um i, I think for sure though value wise like yeah the texans should not be behind the steelers i mean they just be, 
kick the Steelers' butt. And I, I have a lot of questions in terms of, I don't know if I put them on the panic meter for the for the next line, but um, they're definitely a team with what has happened with that offense and how just lacking versatility and um, predict, just so predictable what has happened to Matt Canada. I know he's the fall guy, but this is a plan that was put into place by the whole organization. Man, that I. The fact that, yeah, the Texans are behind them in Super Bowl odds, I'm sorry. I don't. We just saw it on Sunday. I don't think that was an accident. They didn't just fluke into that win. That was a, a beating. Texans are also behind the Broncos. No thanks. Um, yeah, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's just probably path is my guess. Like, it's based on, I mean, even then, right? Like, the Texans have a much better path than the Broncos to get there. Um, yeah. Their division's wide open. The Broncos' division is not wide open. It's clearly going to be the Chiefs or the Chargers. So, yeah, um, no thanks. All right, we'll wrap up a little panic meter thoughts here after four weeks because it's always fun to panic when it comes to NFL teams this early. Now, I did write something on Clutch Points a couple weeks ago when the Bengals and Chargers started 0-2. You know, I always bring up the 0-2 stat for teams that don't make the playoffs. I said they're both not going to make the playoffs. I said they're both going to miss the playoffs. Now, I feel a bit better about the Chargers at this point, although not – listen – when Brandon Staley gets opportunities on fourth down, I don't ever feel anything certain about the Chargers. Um, I feel like between him, Josh McDaniel, and Matt Aberflus, I don't know who wants to get fired quicker in terms of these decisions that are made by by that trio right there. But yeah, I the Bengals are should should they be hitting the panic button, Dylan? I I think a hundred percent. Yeah, it's just it's it's not just that they're losing; it's the way they're losing. Like, and I think that's the most like. That game against the Titans, to me, was every opportunity to, you know, to, to sort of kind of reclaim your spot after finding – look, I there are a lot of people who thought the Rams should have won that game against the Bengals on Monday night, right? Like, Rams should have won the game. But Bengals found a way to win, you know, kind of a, an ugly type game at times, but found a way to win the game. Um, I don't know. I just – the schedule doesn't set up that bad unless you look at the back-to-back games against the – Niners and the Bills coming up here in a couple of weeks, but I just I think Bengals full on panic meter at this point. Yeah, they're. I mean, the thing is, they they had that defensive performance where they wrecked the Rams' offensive line, and yes, the uh, you know we saw this week wasn't perfect for the Rams, but much better without Zach Thomas filling in left tackle. They moved they they moved uh, kicked Nopum out from right guard to left tackle where he used to play and back up at Whitworth and brought in Kevin Dotson at guard, and things look much better. Um, uh, last week, so I, I I don't think it is that crazy to say if the Rams had a better backup plan for their offensive line shuffling mid game against the Bengals that they might have found a way to win. Ob- obviously, a lot of little plays here and there, two to Atwell back of the end zone drops, a, a pass got a little tug. I don't think that there was pi there, but I know some complaints uh, from Rams fans with some of the, the way the DBs are playing in that game. But uh, obviously, two two stepping out. There's a lot of little plays that added up for the Rams. Uh, falling in that game and i think the bengals defense to give them credit look good in that one but man they have not looked good overall um for the whole over four weeks and that's the problem where it's like if the offense is going to have these struggles and i don't think these are yeah again they're not fluky this if burrow is going to not be able to play at a at a high at, you know at as a high level as he can to be one of those transcendent kind of qbs as we know he can be it's not pretty around him. He he does maybe disguise some of the things that they've just relied on him and his talent to take over um, and, and make these plays and these reads. And he, it's just not working right now in the offensive line with all the money they've spent has looked pretty brutal in addition, but it's uh, uh yeah. Panic meters on uh, playoff odds for them through uh, DVOA are like 13% now. I mean, it's, it's just it's not just them. It's the fact that this conference and uh, overall has a, has depth, and there's teams that are, you, you're feeling even after what happened to Miami. If I if I could flip them into a playoff spot, obviously would at this point. Even if the Browns, you have a lot of questions with Deshaun playing. They did look better the week before this one. I, I may, you know I think their defense is going to rebound. There's just a lot of teams that are in the mix. The fact that we have now, yeah, like we talked about the AFC South more than we usually do, even for it being our division. Like there's three quarterbacks in this division that feel like they can go win a game at any given time and then a defense for the titans that we just saw wreck everything that the Bengals wanted to do i mean yeah they have some of the lowest playoff odds in the conference i think only the denver broncos and the vegas raiders have lower at this point um outside yeah, the jets too so i mean like it, panic meters on uh and it's not just for it, it's what you know this means with you know his contract and some of the years that you benefit from the rookie QB deal are, are coming to an end pretty quickly there's questions about T Higgins obviously he has the the fracture 
um, that uh, I think is rib fracture or something like that, that's going to keep him out a few weeks potentially. There are questions about whether he'd be traded. He, he had a kind of a rough performance against the Rams, but it's just more so about he wants a big receiver one deal, and it seems pretty clear. Obviously, Chase is the guy, and are they going to be able to afford that? So, uh, yeah, I, I think the fact the defense has looked where it is and the offense uh, hasn't been able to pick up the offense enough um, like it did against the Rams in week three, uh man they they got to get to the what i think they they have the cardinals and the seahawks next they got to win those games if they yeah. lose even one and they're two and four going into their bye i i don't know it, it's going to get rough for this team over the course of the whole season and i i'm i have you know it's it's tough to see with how you know back-to-back afc title games a super bowl appearance and what this offense can look like um i just don't know uh at this point how quickly they can turn things around it, it's I'm, I'm concerned that even if burrow does get healthier and it doesn't sound like it's going to be easy to without time off um I, i'm concerned about this defense not looking quite the same with some of the you know losing jesse bates losing von bell and some of the the uh things in that back end just not being quite as pretty as they were before two other teams should the patriots and the raiders panic i'm going to give you an answer you may not expect on the raiders and we just talked okay. about Josh McDaniels, and I am by no means his biggest fan. But I don't think the Raiders should panic just yet. And the reason why is I think, look, they've lost two close games back-to-back. And I know they had to kind of fight their way back in the game against the Chargers, and, like, you got to find ways to win, right? But yeah. you know, they at least had a chance towards the end against the Chargers without their starting quarterback. Um, yeah, you probably feel like they should have found a way to beat the Steelers, given all things considered with the matchup and all that. But... I mean, look, the schedule they've got, Green Bay coming up on a Monday night. I, I don't know the Packers. I think the Packers are getting a little too much love right now, and yeah. pun intended, I guess, Dylan. Just, but, I mean, I think the Packers, and I think we saw the Lions, what they could do to them, and I think, you know, maybe the Raiders find a way to win that game. They get the Patriots after that. So, again, talking about panic meter. They get the Patriots at home after that. Then they get the Bears. So, like, I'm not saying the Raiders are going to win three in a row here, but it's not unthinkable to believe that they'll actually may wind up being the favorite in all three of those games. Perhaps I'm not saying it's going to happen. I mean, I think the Packers are like one and a half point favorite right now or something like that. But so I don't, I don't know that I'm hitting the panic button on the Raiders just yet. Um, Still got some talented players on that team as we know. And I think they'll be able to run the ball a little bit better against green Bay. All things considered what we saw um, that the lions do in that game. Right. And uh, so, and then again, the bears just being on the schedule period, now, if you lose that game, panic meter full on. Um, but <laughs> I don't know that I'm panicking on the Raiders just yet. Patriots, I just, I think it's just the offense, man. I And I know they played a tough schedule. Look, Patriots have played yeah. four games against the Eagles, Dolphins, Jets, and Cowboys, right? And that's tough. It's well, not going to get much easier, though. Listen, right? it, doesn't get, it doesn't get much easier. Yeah, I was going to say, they got the Saints. They'll play defense this week. They get at the Raiders. Bills, Dolphins after that, uh, and just kind of keep going. I think it is probably time for the Patriots to hit the panic meter because I just don't think they have the offensive firepower to play their way out of these types of games. Now, the defense will have you know better showings like they did against the Jets and such, but I it is wild to think that I, maybe I have more confidence in a Josh McDaniels coach Raiders team than I do Bill Belichick coach Patriots team. And let me just tell you, that was not an easy decision to make, but to me, it's all about the schedule and strengths and weaknesses of the specific team, not the coaching. It's a no brainer in that uh, regard, but I don't know, Dylan, if I had to kind of, you know, put one on, pick one for each, I'd maybe go don't panic Raiders panic Patriots. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, I think there's a, a difference between with the Raiders in terms of expectations too. Um, I, maybe it's more so maybe they, internally they thought they're going to be better than they than they are. But uh, there's the difference between the Patriots and the Raiders for me is one team I thought they had even with the toughest schedule supposed to be in the league, right? Um, and, and as you mentioned, has been for the first few weeks, and it's not going to get much easier. But even considering that, still felt like all right, this offense we saw flashes uh, a couple of years ago with Mac and what they could look like. Um, but man, they it's just Maybe it was just one game against the Cowboys, but I have a lot of questions about just overall the buy-in. Even if everything they say in the press conferences from Mac and all the players is that they're fully behind him, and I, I believe in that. But it, Mac just looked at a certain point of that game against Dallas like he was just over it, like he, it just did not look as engaged as you'd like. So I, yeah, I think the Raiders for me, even if I 
I, I still have a lot of concerns about where this organization is um, and where it, it, if it's really in touch with where it, where it is and if they should start to to kind of look f- forward more so than they maybe are trying to. Maybe they'll win some games, but what does that actually ultimately lead to? Um, I, I think if I'm a Raider fan, it, it's not so much I'm pressing panic because I was already kind of worried before the season, whereas the Patriots and, as I mentioned, the Steelers are the two teams that it feels like, man, you have good defenses and your offenses are just wasting things for you, especially Pittsburgh more so. I didn't, like I mentioned, I didn't throw them on here at first, but I think that that offense uh, – now in your a full season after what we saw last year that just feels like it's going to be lost for Kenny Pickett and by the time you actually get to year four year five may, after, maybe you have a couple seasons with a new coach that you have to hire the right guy to get him uh, going but I you know I just feel like you're falling behind more so with his um with his development and I guess you could say something similar with Mac and what's happened with the Patriots it's been a you know three years this is the third season now and it's it seemingly has gone down each year and I, maybe it still looks better than last year, but that's not saying much after what was happening with the coaching staff. So yeah. Um, I, I think that the, the uh, Raiders, even if it sounds crazy, like you said, maybe less panic, isn't maybe the right word, just more depression almost for me about where they are. I, um, <laughs> some of the draft picks that even if they have retooled things, I still have concerns about where they're going. Um, but uh, man, I, I think, yeah, Steelers, Patriots, offense in particular, I, I'm fully pressing the, bu- pressing the button. I don't blame the Steelers fans for their displeasure f- with what happened with Matt Canada. And like I said, I, I don't just blame – it's not just him. It's him, the people putting him in that position to put uh, to a job that he's not clearly been able – I mean, they have some good players on offense too around him. I, I, I Again, it just was really striking how Houston so quickly um, with their new coaching staff looked – so versatile and multiple with their offensive attack and with with a uh, battered offensive line um, versus the Steelers where it's so cookie cutter and it I mean it's it's hard to watch and for New England I, I'm sure they're frustrated they've had some injuries on their own offensive line um, two teams that I'm fully panicking um, in terms of not so much even that I thought that they were going to you know didn't pick them either of them to make the playoffs but thought that they could at least be border fringe contenders. Maybe they still can get back to that point. Steelers only two and two, obviously um, Patriots at one and three, but I, yeah, I'm more so panicking about the development of my, my young uh, QB on a rookie deal with what has been put in front of them. That's where the frustration lies. A couple other quick ones for me on the panic button. Panthers. Um, I know you didn't have high expectations, but I think you should absolutely be panicking at this point. I mean, Dylan, if you pull up the Panther schedule, find me more than a win on there right now and that win comes via the chicago bears possibly in a thursday night game all the other games um i mean they'd be the underdog in every other game on their schedule so yeah and bryce young is you know he's not looked the best at times i don't know it's not saying it's all his fault but yeah panthers um i thought it'd be a little bit better (laughs) i mean i just i didn't think they'd be this to this point and again the schedule's not gonna make it easier by the way at detroit at miami coming up next so, yeah, not ideal. And another team, if, yeah. under the radar panic time, Falcons. Um, I, we said, right, I thought the, the 2-0 and start was a little deceiving for the, for the Falcons. Um, Desmond Ritter, again, talk about, boy, um, there's a struggle there. And, I mean, Taylor Heineke's the backup, right? And, I mean, maybe he comes in eventually, but I know Arthur Smith today, as we're recording this, said that Ritter's the starting quarterback. Boy, they have got to figure some things out. Um, I think that could be one that's kind of under the radar. But, yeah. Uh, not, not The NFC South, Dylan, we had issues with last year, of course. But these two teams are, um, I think, could be heading in the wrong direction here quickly. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about the, the uh, Falcons for sure. <laughs> my, my pick of them winning the division. I don't feel good about anyone in this division. I, even Tam- I mean, Tampa uh, probably feel the best about just because at least their defense has been – quite good and they have really talented skill players and i think baker can play at a at a a serviceable level where it's going to be enough for this team to win games um yeah the falcons offense looks terrible uh it it even (laughs) it had so you know moments of and i I guess maybe that's not the wrong word but it has looked just completely lacking any explosiveness outside of if Bajan's able to just make five guys miss which he does do at times um you're feeling great about what he can be as a player, but man, I'm 
I'm looking at those QBs that you that number three pick that the Arizona Cardinals had. That was a trade ship that ultimately the Texans trade up to get Will Anderson. And you're looking at what Richardson's doing for the Colts. I'm looking at find the Panthers at the two guys behind Bryce Young, and maybe you know you can say the circumstances for those guys are better than the Panthers, but that didn't mean they had to be before the season. We didn't think necessarily that was going to be the case that the yeah. Panthers had such a uh, better situation than Houston and Indianapolis. And we've just quickly um, seen with the, not just the QBs that they've um, drafted, but the coaching hires with what D'Amico and uh, the offensive group that they brought over. Um, I'm blanking on their uh, the Texans offense coordinator name, but the guy from the 49ers as well that under Kyle Shanahan has looked fantastic with that uh, attack and what Stroud's looked like and what Richardson's looked like with Steichen. It's, um, yeah, man, uh, the Panthers are definitely, if I – the panic for me isn't about the own four record. It is about what the other two rookie quarterbacks look like and what mine does. Yeah. Um, that's my that, – and that, I don't think it's that bold after four weeks. It's probably – maybe you could say it's an overreaction a little bit to say that the Panthers will ultimately regret not uh, drafting Stroud or Richardson and taking Young. Um, but through the first part of the season, yeah, that, that feels quite uh, apt. Um, and also with the coaching – Hires. We'll see if Frank Reich and the team can turn things around. But it is, it has looked, it's been tough. And I know they, they think it's personnel related. They're looking for a number one receiver now. That's uh, the latest thing. It's like what that actually means for the team this year. I think it's more so, again, about having an answer for Bryce and trying to help him out. And I, I think Bryce, in moments when guys have been open, he, he's been okay. I think, I think coaching here, I, I would be really curious what Bryce would look like in the other two situations with the staffs they have. Um, I, I don't know if it's as to blame right now, but that, if I'm a Panthers fan, I'm I'm definitely worried. It's on it's on my it's on my uh, it has my attention. And Falcons, I'm at least for the Falcons, uh, we kind of knew that w- this might be a season where they figured out that Ritter was not going to be the guy, um, it, or maybe he was going to to prove it. We still have some way to go, but so far it doesn't look like that's the case. So now it's now it's like, did we have that chance to trade up and get Anthony Richardson or? Uh, you know, the whole thing where I don't think Lamar was really ever available as the Ravens made it sound like he could be, but there was a whole thing where no team, including the Falcons, which was like easily made the most sense for so many reasons, uh, should be interested. And it was, came out that they weren't, it's like, what are we doing? Um, so I I think that for them, I'm not panicked, but I'm like, I'm like looking at the QB. That's why I mentioned them with Kirk. I'm like, I'm looking at any options. All options are on the table for me if I'm the Falcons to try to figure out that position because I do think the defense uh, has a chance to be solid enough. Um, and I do think they have some interesting weapons and they might need to open things up a bit more if they get a better quarterback. But right now this, this system might win you some games and it might win this division, but I, you're not, you're, it's, this isn't like the Lions and some teams that um, – weren't in that top three in the NFC where I feel like they could ultimately contend for, um, for the conference. Uh, I, if I see the Falcons as my first playoff team, I feel pretty good about it um, if I'm one of those top uh, teams in the NFC. Well, Falcons, uh, quite a few quarterbacks available in next year's draft that, um, yeah, I think are going to be pretty good. So you know what to 100%. do at this point. So um, there you go. Falcons fans won't want to hear that. It's okay. You're only four weeks in the season. There's plenty of football to play. So – There you go. There are thoughts kind of on where things stand after four weeks. And again, some predictions for looking at the rest of the NFL season. But a lot of stuff like that as well, Dylan, over Clutch Points. So let everybody know where they can find all of that. Yeah, you can go to the Clutch Points app to the NFL section. Follow along with all the games. All of our content is thrown in there. Um, Yeah, a lot of good stuff. And then also ClutchPoints.com. There's the NFL section at the top of the page, the fantasy section. Any waiver wire pickups, start them, sit them uh, stuff that Blake's been writing, all that good stuff you can find in the fantasy section and in the NFL section. Yeah, also following... Every trade rumor, every reaction, uh, overreactions, looking at people to blame for some of these starts or some of these teams. Yeah, anything and everything you can uh, about the NFL, you can find in the NFL section at Clutch Points. Yep, check it out there. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast, any podcast app you use. Search for Establish the Pass. And thanks, as always, for listening to the podcast. And we'll talk to you next time here on the Establish the Pass podcast.